to our second question, which comes from Dom. Dom asks, I commit to engaging in sauna sessions three to four times a week. It gets quite boring in the sauna, so I was thinking about engaging in a breathwork practice. I'm assuming when he's saying like he's in the sauna. Is that okay, or are there downsides? I assume that breath holding is probably not a good idea in the sauna. So I'm going to give up a little bit of preliminary thoughts and ideas just because I, I do actually commit to three to four times a week in the sauna and enjoy it. I do about 20 to 25 minutes each time uh, I, I sit in a dry sauna, uh, which gets you know anywhere from about 200 degrees, 210 degrees max. Um, that's Fahrenheit. Uh, and, uh, and I do have a breathwork practice that I engage in when I'm in the sauna. Uh, and so I, I thought that this was a great question because I was like, oh, well, I'll tell you a little bit about what I do. And then I was very interested, Patrick, into, into hearing about, you know, what you think, if there are any downsides, uh, because again, I practice this and I, I, and I want you to tell me if I'm doing something incorrect as well. Uh, but no, I, I love my sauna practice. And the reason is being is because I, I am also someone who like, I don't want to just sit there and kind of like think, and it's not to say sitting and thinking is a bad thing, but I just like to be kind of like killing more birds with one stone if I can. So I'll do like journaling when I'm in the sauna. I have one of those right the rain journals, which is like an all weather, like universal journal that you can get, you know, sweat and water on and will su su sustain or sustain from heat, like really high conditions. So I'll journal and then I'll also do anywhere from about five to 10 minutes of focused breath work practices. Um, you know, they asked about breath holding. He said, he said, I assume breath holding is probably not a good idea in the sauna. Uh, I have never done breath holds in the sauna and I can't imagine that's a good idea, but tell me what you think, Patrick, is that okay? Are there downsides to breath work in the sauna? Is it a good idea? And, and what about breath holds in the sauna i suppose breath holds you could be holding your breath for five seconds or you could hold your breath for a minute um so it really depends do you hold your breath on the inhalation or do you exhale and hold your breath uh interesting that the term heat and heat and increased carbon dioxide both are going to cause a right shift of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve and basically what this means is that hemoglobin is the main carrier of oxygen in the blood so 98 0.5% of your oxygen is carried bound by hemoglobin, which is a protein within the red blood cells. And a catalyst for hemoglobin to release oxygen is increased temperature and increased carbon dioxide and drop to blood pH. So in the sauna, you've got that in a sauna, you've got a combined approach. If you're doing breath exercises with the intention of reducing breathing volume, either by holding the breath or by slowing down and breathing light, to take less air into your body. I would have a pulse oximeter in there. Now, I understand that moisture and pulse oximetry mightn't go together. I've used it with um, hot yoga because I was kind of intrigued just the basics of hot yoga. And you will see in a hot yoga studio that your blood oxygen saturation will drop down to about 93%. Now, this could be cause for concern for somebody who wouldn't necessarily be thinking about it but it's never a cause for concern if you're inside in a hot environment or you're doing breath holding. Naturally, when you have an increased temperature and hemoglobin is releasing oxygen more readily, it's going to show a slight drop to your SpO2, which is your fraction of your hemoglobin occupied by oxygen. The only reason that your oxygen drops is because your hemoglobin is releasing oxygen to the tissues and organs. So it's a good thing. The increased carbon dioxide as a result of doing reduced volume breathing. So what you could do is taking a very soft and light gentle breath in through your nose for maybe three or four seconds, totally silent, almost breathing imperceptibly for three or four seconds and a really relaxed and a slow and gentle exhalation maybe for five or six seconds and having it to the point that you feel air hunger, which tells you that your carbon dioxide has increased a little in the blood. And the body is very sensitive to an increase of carbon dioxide. So that's why you feel the air hunger. But knowing that when you're doing the practice that your, your hemoglobin is releasing oxygen more readily to where it's needed. So it could be a good practice for improving body oxygenation. Now, I don't see a downfall to it. Of course, you don't want to be holding your breath to the extreme. I wouldn't be doing hyperventilation along breath holes because the hyperventilation is going to get rid of too much carbon dioxide then you can hold your breath for a long, long time because you don't feel the alarm to breathe and the risk of passing out would be possible and absolutely you don't want to pass out in the sauna. Um, but gentle exercises, no problem whatsoever. 
And yeah, that no, that's great feedback, um, and that's kind of very similar to the way that I've looked at it. Uh, and 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 again, like I also look at it in this way too. Like the reason that you are engaging in a sauna session, or at least most people nowadays, uh, is because of the longevity effects of hormesis. So hormesis being kind of the stress to our bodies that can improve resiliency to stress and build the body in a stronger, more adaptive way. So we, what is kind of the predominant way that we see hormesis working out, it's exercise. And so actually sauna has been shown to demonstrate a very similar physiological effect to engaging in exercise. And I think the combo of exercise plus sauna, and then maybe even too cold exposure, which we're not necessarily going to get into today, can be quite effective in becoming more adaptive to the effects physiologically and psychologically of stress. And so I kind of actually view it this way. So I love the physiological effects that you mentioned just now. And I love that there is some... uh, uh, even more, uh, I, I guess we could say amplified of effects of breath work within a sauna practice, but also too, a lot of people like will say like I get in the sauna and like my mind starts going and all I can focus on is like the pain. Like it's so difficult sometimes to just like sit there and sweat and be in the pain. And I have found that when I engage in a breathwork practice, because of all of what's happening to my physiology, like, again, I start to embrace a lot more of the pain in a much more resilient way. So my breathwork practice within the sauna actually makes it feel like it's less stressful on the body because I'm engaging in something that's allowing my nervous system uh, to slow down and to relax within the effects of the high intensity or, or, or of the significance of stress that I'm engaging in when I'm in the sauna. So I think it's a really great way of kind of com- uh, combining both the hormesis of sauna, you know, increasing sirtuin activity, increasing heat shot proteins, like increasing the anti-aging effects of the sauna alongside with actually like helping to engage the nervous system to become uh, more adaptive to what it's experiencing. So I think that's a lot of great effects. And I would agree with you too, like the last place that you want to pass out, especially if you're alone, is in the sauna. So for me, I- I've never even done short breath holds like again like you said like there's there's probably you know some ability to do that or merit to do that depending on the person but for me I've just kind of stayed away from it just because I am I'm nervous about like passing out in the sauna and then like somebody finding me like way too late and I've experienced a a little bit too much stress because I passed out in the sauna so you just got to be careful know thyself uh, take it easy Uh, but again like if you want to kill two birds with one stone sauna session plus a breathwork practice think that there's a lot of upside to that Thanks for listening to the Hanu Health Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. This podcast would not happen without listeners and supporters like you. And the best way to support us and the show is to head on over to iTunes and provide us with a five-star review. This helps us reach others and spread the good word of breathing and stress resiliency. If we read your five-star review on air, please reach out to podcast at hanuhealth.com with your name and mailing address, and we will send you some sweet Hanu gear. Until next time, breathe better and stress less. Thank you.